Welcome to the Sit Down Zumok podcast, coming at you live and direct in full effect from Los Angeles, California, episode 154 of this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be here. Thanks for uh, everyone that signed up for the Patreon. I'm always giving you guys shouts out. Much love. Ashley, what's up? She sent me a nice email today. But I want to get into this week's episode. It's the first episode at the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast Studio. You can follow them on at Pomedy, uh, Comedy, Pom Pomedy, Pomedy Cop Up on Venmo. Venmo? <laughs> Is that says Venmo? That's for famous. Okay, yeah, follow them on Venmo. <laughs> follow them on PayPal. You're like, how come we don't have any followers? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah. But they're on Instagram. They're at Comedy Pop Up on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, follow us at Bank of America. <laughs> well, yeah. Fifth Third. Yeah. Uh, uh, my guest today is a guy I've known my whole career. Uh, I've known of him, and he's a guy who's been doing this and banging around. Uh, he's He's been on Comedy Central. He's been on The Tonight Show. And uh, according to my research, Paul, <laughs> you were in the movie Be Cool with John Travolta. Yeah, and we both shave our heads now. Yeah, Does he shave his head now? Yeah, have you seen him lately? Okay, well, before yeah. we get into that. Yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you might know him as the party starter. You might know him as Darren Carter. You might know him as Darren C Carter, the party starter. Darren Carter, the party starter, is here. Yay! <laughs> Ladies, you might know me not as Darren, but Duran. Not really, but that Durand. was my thing when I was single. Yeah. Duran? Yeah. And then my kid said it the other day, and it just didn't sound as cool. When an 11-year-old is like, hey, Duran, yeah. give me some Cheeto Puffs. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you're a guy I've like. I remember when I first started in 2005, you were banging around Jay Davis shows and oh yeah, Dublin's and all those shows. You were in the double. You were one part of the Dublin's yeah. crew, right? Yeah, that's, that's when great. like when Dane was Dane. Dane was Dane. Yeah, it was awesome. It was like you'd have all the best comics from like the Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory and the Improv, and we'd meet there and and then we we get paid on Tuesdays. So you'd make like you can make like eighty bucks on a Tuesday. Really? In town right there. Oh wow! Yeah, just like in between gigs, you're like go down there and like be treated like a star. They had a VIP on Mondays, and um, so and a lot of the doormen would recognize you. You know, they'd know you from your comedy set. So they'd be like, "Come, you should come roll through here on a Monday. We do Celebrity Mondays." And I'm like, "All right." So kind of gave you a taste of what it's like to be famous a little bit. Like, yeah, there's the long line and like the guy with the clipboard, and and they're like, "Chad, yeah, yeah, Chad can come through, Chad." And you're like, "Nice." And then people are like, "Who's that guy?" And then, then of course you walk in there and like the celebrities are like you and like, like, you know, like the other comedians and then maybe a few like college basketball players or something. And you're like, there's no celebrities up here. Well, didn't like, like Britney Spears. And oh, that. Oh yeah, for sure. Like on the comedy shows, the comedy shows they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember seeing like Matthew McConaughey, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, like, like all these people, you know, Vince Vaughn would come down a lot because he was friends with Ahmed Ahmed. Well, and that's when that whole yeah. Wild West comedy tour thing oh, became yeah. because of uh, he was always going to those shows. And, you know, he became a friend of Ahmed Ahmed and put together that little movie with Sebastian and yeah. Ernst. And yeah, that, that, that at that time, I was excited about comedy, man. Like I wanted to do that because that's, you know, you're like, yeah. And now and the, one of the reasons why I had you on and yeah. we'll get to the John Travolta in a minute is because I uh, it's 2019. I am. I hate comedy right now. And yeah. you're like a guy who's been yeah. doing this for a long time. You seem like you got your shit together and you're positive. If you follow Darren on your social media, which is uh, Darren Carter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on Instagram, it's official Darren Carter. And my podcast is called Pocket Party. And and that's what the, the you know, the theme of my podcast is. I'm like, let's go. Let's let's leave the politics at the door. Let's leave all the negativity at the door, you know. And, and you know, I mean, if it something pops up, maybe. But I, I don't really harp on it because I'm like, let's just stay positive and And uh, without sounding corny or lame it's like you know when i whatever i would get like the blues or depressed or whatever i was like man I, I i like i would gravitate toward things that made me feel better as opposed to the dark side where it's easy to go down that road and every sure. now and then i have a guilty pleasure and i you know i i like you know of course we like to know the latest gossip and that's not good man it's just not good for yourself because you want to have longevity and you know, I started comedy. My first paid gig was in February of 90, dude, 1990. Wow. Yeah. And it's like my first TV break I got in 1996, I think. Yeah, 96. So it's like, you know, and there's the ups and the downs. There's like the highs. You know how you get those really like those extreme highs? Like yeah. I'm sure you've – where you're like, oh, my God. Like for me, it was like, you know, 
being passed at the comedy store, the Laugh Factory, booking a movie and a national commercial all within a year. And I was like, it's meant to happen. I must move to L.A. And then but then the low was I got here and it's like back of the line, pal. It's like shoots and ladders. You had to start. I had, you kind of have to start almost all over when you when I first moved here back then. I yeah. Mean, there's some people they get escorted right in and they're like, you know, they got top representation and things happen for him, but it is easy to get down. Yeah, you know, I started in LA in 2005. I was here for like two and a half years and I, I was getting some heat early and I knew I was a fraud. I was like, I got I to gotta get away. I got to go grow somewhere. I don't want to grow in front of anyone. Did so, you write a book back then or no? I, I, I wrote up. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I helped write a book. That was cool because I think I saw your name. I was doing, I just showed with you back in Irvine. I was like, because I, I hardly ever would look up to other comedians, but for some reason, something – I was like, this guy's an author. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I was like, I got to meet this guy. <laughs> I know. You know. It was cool. But yeah, I do remember that briefly. Yeah, I, I, I came out here because I wasn't even doing stand-up. I was writing uh, – I was helping writing a book. Yeah. And I kind of fell into it. And so you know your first year in stand-up. You <laughs> this is walk- hilarious because this is – I'm like – and then you just fell into writing a book. Yeah, I'm like Shakespeare. You know, I just uh, – <laughs> I fell into writing a best-selling novel. I, there I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my first year of stand, I was like, like I was obsessed with it, like, like, yeah. and I'm, I'm looking at myself then till now, like now I'm just like, I, I fucking hate this. This is like, but I look at your Instagram, you're yeah. always positive, like you said, and you're always putting those videos out, and yeah, you're into working out, and I'm at this point, and I'm just like, man, I, I, I got to get out of this funk, man. It's tough, man. It is tough to get in because once you get into the funk, it's easy to be like, you know. Um, what, what are some of the things that like bring you down? Is it because they say comparison is the thief of joy. Is it one of those? Is that part of it where you, how come this person did this or what? Ah, Cause I, I get that way too. Yeah. You know, I'm never really upset at people's successes. Like, yeah. especially if I'm friends with you, I am more right. than like whatever, yeah. what, 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 everything that's happened to Burt Kreischer right now. I'm like, good. Right. Thank yeah. you. That's, yeah. he deserves to be rewarded yeah. for, but oh, oh, let me ask you this. Okay. So not like, not the people like, I'm not going to say, I'll just, uh, I was gonna say above you, but you know what I mean? Like the people above me too, you know, not, not the people that are up there. <laughs> like, you know, I'm talking where I started feeling it was when people started comedy, like, you know, like well, people that I thought I was better than, Yeah. you know, like, gosh, they've only been doing it for th- three minutes. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah. you know, skyrocket. And at first I didn't mind. I was like, Hey, to each his own, we all have our time. And then as the months go by and the years go by, and then you're like this showcase and that showcase and this festival, then that's when it's like, it's like getting pummeled. Like it's like those MMA things when they get the leg kick. You're like, you can, you know, withstand a couple. Then it's like, damn, like 15 in a row, like damn that, you know, they got this and that. And yeah. That's when you have to realize like, okay. I got to do something because this is going to get me down. Yeah. You know, I think with, with whatever's going on in social media right now with our peers, it, see, yeah. it seems like we're not even doing comedy anymore. It feels like it's WWE wrestling and we're like just talking shit. And, and, you know, I got people I came up with in Cleveland. They, they hate me. And it's just like <laughs> comedy is yeah. bringing me more negative. Uh, it, yeah. The see, quote, I, the great Brody Stevens, yeah. uh, negative energy. So yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I just don't feel like I'm, I'm being rewarded for something I used to love. Hmm. You know what? Maybe you were going down a certain path, I'm guessing. And then maybe you took a left turn and you're like, started engaging with people, fighting with them online. That doesn't lead to anything positive or good or make yeah. you feel good. You know, I, I remember when Ralphie May got onto Twitter, I was like, why is he? I told Lana, I go, why? tell him, like, I go, if you can't tell him, don't, don't fight with everybody that it's just going to, it's a never ending thing. And it's just going to make him feel bad. And it's just like, he would respond to everybody. Yeah. It's like, no, I know. was doing that for a while too. And I, you know, I, I always get into Twitter trouble. It's, it's a weird, yeah. Twitter's a weird thing because it's like, you know, like I posted something recently on Instagram and somebody didn't like one of the guests that I had on my podcast. And I just deleted the comment right away. But on Twitter, you can't really do that, huh? It's just it's just out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. Who was the guest? Uh, <laughs> I'll just tell you, it was Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, that's a great guest. He's a great guest. He's a comedy legend. Yes. And, and but you know, somebody didn't like his politics, and so they were like, and so I was just like, I don't want to bring. Like I said, I don't, I, I don't want to get into it. I'm not going to respond one way or another. I'm just going to delete that comment yeah. because, you know, I don't want anyone to be like, not, you know, like, oh, I don't agree with that guy's politics, and then it just goes, you know, just. Yeah, it's like it's like a hornet's nest, right? Nah. Well, as a guy who's yeah. pretty much, I mean, you've done everything you can do. You've been on late night talk shows. You've been in movies. You know, Byron Allen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got your own albums. You've- yeah, I got four albums, I, and that's another thing. Um, I'll tell you, Chad. The uh, in the down times or in the times when there's things that are out of your control, I ask myself, what can I control? Because you know, and this is another thing. Okay, I, you know. I, I love watching like these YouTube tutorials on how to do something that I haven't, that I don't know how to do. And they, and they say, rather than concentrating on like, why don't I have more followers? Why don't I have, 
think about the things you can control. And I can, you know, and so I'm like, well, what can I control? I can control going to the coffee shop, writing out my material, planning my next album, and then being like, okay, I'm ready. And then put out an, put out an album, you know? Yeah. And then nowadays you can, you know, go through CD baby and then it'll stream it and put it out to iTunes and Amazon and put it everywhere you need to be. And then you'll start getting checks in the mail and people will know about you and, They'll be driving around their serious their cars, listening to Sirius XM, and discover you or hear you, and that's something you can't. That's something we can control. Right, right, you know? right. So I should focus on more things I can control. Yeah. What I would do here's the thing is that, that I would do, and this is what things that I I do do. Um, little things like make a little gratitude list. I swear to you, man, it sounds silly, but it's like it's true. Just whenever you're feeling down, just write like just literally like write down five things that may you know five things you're grateful for that day. You know, grateful for that day. Yeah, that's grateful. Like, let's just do it right now. You want to do it right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do it right now. Okay. Can you close that computer? Because I get ADD and I'm going to be like, you, you, you want to read your Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why would I? I wrote it. Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank God you went to the Wikipedia. You know what? I used to have a bio on my website. And I don't know about you, but I hate bios. I really, it's one of those things where, you know, once you get into comedy, by the way, Mike just, uh, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, he accidentally unplugged his mic. <laughs> for the live stream, everybody, this yeah. is, uh, that, oh, yeah, they're live streaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're not live streaming. They're, well, I don't it's, know. It's going to be on tape. Gosh. I love how the, it's like a camera from the side. Does my profile look huge right now? This is the worst. Here we go. I'm going to be just like this. You look like a real in shape Jeff Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that once. They go, they go, look like, they go, this guy looks like if Jeff Ross did a sport one time. Like, okay. Yeah. He would respect that. Joe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a picture of the two of us together. We do look like we could be brothers. But, yeah. Um, on stage, I tell people lately, once I shave the head and start working out more, I'm like, I look like Bruce Willis. I go, if you have two drinks or more, I look like Bruce Willis. I go, who said three drinks or more? And they clap. And I'm like, Vin Diesel, you know, I go, Here's sober, and then they'll clap, and I'll be like, "Now these people, I get nervous around, and I step away from them. They're like, that looks like Jeff Bezos from Amazon or whatever. Uh, you know? like, that's uh, Olaf from Frozen came to life. Yeah. But I knew you when you had hair. <laughs> I know, bright red hair, yeah. like it's it was thick as yours at one point. Man, you're lucky you have all your hair. That's the one thing. We're, yeah, I'm grateful for. We're making this list, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I got that's a great. full yeah. head of hair. Yeah. And I went to the barber today and he was just like, you got a good head of hair. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Thank you. He's like, he's like, well, a long time customer. Yeah. <laughs> How much is a haircut these days? Uh, that's, you know what? That's a good question coming from a gentleman. Without yeah, who's bald. Yeah. yeah. That, I paid today. I paid 25 bucks and Damn. I gave him a uh, $5 tip. So 30. How often do you get your haircut? Every three weeks. Gosh. Yeah. Okay, I'm, okay. Now it's my turn. I'm grateful. I don't have to pay for haircuts. There you go. Yeah, I literally take an electric razor, take the guard off, and I shave it like every three days. Now, when I'm on the road, because I don't have like the medical, not not medical, the um, the medicine cabinet mirror where you yeah. can see all the angles, I don't want to miss a spot, so I just shave it every morning. Just like like I just buzz it. I don't really yeah. shave it. I buzz it. That way I'm like, if I miss a spot, it's only a day's worth of growth that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I remember when I tapped out in the haircut game, uh, I think I was paying, I think it was like 18 bucks. That's reasonable. It was back, eighteen, and then you throw in a few extra for the tip. And back then, home, that's yeah. that's a Midwest haircut right there. Yeah, price. Oh, I like that Midwest, <laughs> Mid- Midwest prices. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me go through this list real quick. Okay. I got a million things I got to ask. So, you. so you got you, you, okay. You you uh, you're grateful that you have hair. I am grateful. A full head of hair, great hair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you got a great smile. Thanks. I'll take that. Great we'll, smile. We'll, we'll go two. We'll go two for two. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm grateful for the friendships I do have, like my loyal friendships. I am grateful for that because they're, you know, the other day I was like, I know, because I know you're married now and you have a kid. Yeah. And I'm still single. I'm in my 40s. Mm-hmm. And you just, your relationships, you appreciate them a lot more. Yeah. Especially as you get older. They say old, old, older friends are, it's, it's, the, it's the best treasure ever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, I, I guess I'm grateful for, I, I, I live, I'm living in California and I, t- that's awesome. And it's only going to get better. It's May right now. The yeah. weather's going to get better. You're going to see, you know, a lot less clothing, tan bodies, people that are super fit trying to be in the movies and stuff. It's the, it's the best. I can't even, you don't even realize it until you leave town and then you come back and like, oh my gosh, everyone here is so pretty. Even the homeless are handsome. I mean, it's like, you know what I mean? They got six packs and like. Sexy the, homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know, like the, yeah, it's just, it's great. Yeah. That's another thing. Like I got like, I'm in my forties. I have a dad body and I have no kids, no wife. I, I need to get, I, yeah. I got to get with you. Yeah. We're uh, going to do that. Let's go number five. Remember, what's the number of five thing I'm grateful for. Uh, I get to be a full-time standup. 
Like I don't have yes. to have a day job. Yes. So I guess I guess I'm grateful in that. Yeah, that's great. And then do you um, you know, I was watching this Rogan clip today, Joe Rogan clip, and they were talking about who Joe Rogan. <laughs> that's why I did a podcast <laughs> once, and this guy was like, he kind of whispered, he goes, "We don't talk about other podcasts." Like like they're gonna stop listening to Chad's, and then all of a sudden, like yeah, Joe Rogan has one. I like to pretend like we're in like. Strict competition, me and Rogan, like like we're we're neck and neck. My podcast and him, so I don't. It's that old radio. I wonder trick. what his gratitude list is. <laughs> uh, I'm running shit. <laughs> exactly, totally different than ours. Yeah. I'm the Johnny Carson of the internet. I can make your career. I know. <laughs> I'm grateful for my kettlebells. I'm grateful for my compound. I'm grateful for my eighteen thousand seat arenas. I Do you sell know Rogan? Uh, yeah, but not like that. Like I don't. Not enough to enjoy some of those. Uh, you know. Tours and kettlebells. I've had two conversations with Joe Rogan. I've, I never approach him. It, yeah, that's to, smart. That's yeah, smart. Yeah. I think because guys at that level, they get everyone's, you know, I can't, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. I was just going to say like, I, um, I look at, you know, I, I imagine that they're like a cat, you know, like, and, and you don't just run up to a cat and go, kitty, kitty, kitty. And the cat's going to be, wow, you know, but if you're just sort of around and they kind of know who you are and you're cool and you're not trying to. Then all of a sudden the cat's like, what's going on over there? And that's how I am. You know, that's the way I've done it with, you know, as far as I know, like, and it's, and it's, it's just a better way because, you know, you don't like it either, right? Like if people start to know you and they want that, that, you know, you, we've, you've been approached by somebody who knows you from, you know, yeah. your work and they're like, you know, they, they know, they say if you come up with somebody and you know, like, like, like one or two or three things is, is cool. Like if they're like, Hey, you wrote a book, you're from Cleveland, um, you know, then, and then they, you used to be in the radio, like wonder is cool, but then they start naming like, like eight or nine things and it gets, they said people get creeped out by it. Yeah. Is that true? That's what they say. They say <laughs> if it's more than three things, people can strangers that, that you, you like, it's different in our business because we do put it all out there with stand up and podcasting, right. but, but you know, like, yeah, it can be weird. So if you were like Joe Rogan, I, so how's it, and you start naming his neighborhood and this and that, it's like, dude, relax. Who are you? What's going on? You know, it'd be like weird. Yeah. Like I, I recently, not the name drop, but I have to, but it, cause it ties into this conversation. By the way, I, I, I do name drop a lot. I'm doing really, it. You got really it. Really bad. I love it. Yeah. I got to be somewhat friendly with Michael Rappaport. And I, I know I met him twice. No, I'm just kidding. I was trying to match you, Joe Rogan. <laughs> but I know everything about the guy, but I got to pretend like I don't. So he doesn't get like yeah. weirded out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 You're he like likes a, me and he knows who so I am. So how's your father, Mark? Yeah. Isn't yeah. his dad Mark or something? Mark Linnell or something? I, I get something or... to do with, uh, con yeah, something. I don't know. Yeah. 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 That's what I heard. I don't know. Like, <laughs> But I know like his whole, sh everything about the dude, but I'm just like, hey, what's up, man? Like he's my equal. Like we're cool, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I just wanted to say I'm friendly with Michael Rappaport as well. I'm trying so to the guy's blowing up. He's really fun to watch on the internet, man. Like the oh, Instagram hilarious. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> circle back around. Let's let's just talk with you a little bit. You started in 1990. Yeah, 1990. How, what, God, that sounds a long time ago. What brought you into this? Because so, you, you were always considered, in my opinion, in yeah, one of the good guys in comedy. Yeah, you're one of the good guys. Um, I thank you. I. Uh, I like, I don't know. I just was one of those kids that just always people said you, I should be a comedian. They're like, you're funny. And then I got into like, you know, in, in high school, I used to rap, you know, acapella style, yeah. you know, um, this is like in the eighties and there you was a like hip hop. Guy. I was back then, you yeah. know, for sure. It was, it was hip hop back then was awesome because it was new. It was, it was like, the best. It was the best. It was like, you know, this is like even pre beastie boys. It was like grandmaster flat and all that stuff, you know, all the early the stuff. message. Yeah. The message and sugar Hill gang. And it was like, what is this music? And then, and then you'd see like, you know, run DMC and they had their comical songs. Songs and like cool modi and and it was like it was very it was kind of simple like you're like i could actually do this myself like you could go to your room and be i mean they could probably they'd probably say that now with like the mumble rap but but back then it was kind of like you know like, like that stupid you know like you'd be ill yeah it was always like positive like uh, going to the store i'm gonna pick up some milk and everything's gonna be all right it's yeah, like, yeah 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 it's yeah, like yeah. Da, 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 da. go see the doctor you know just yeah 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 see like here's one of my early raps i used to go um back when i had hair of course <laughs> When I was a kid, my hair was black, but then something happened, something went whack. Some mother ha, -ha pushed me in my back and made me fall into a strawberry patch. Now the corn, it's all puns, here we go. Now the corn had ears, her eye was raw. The potatoes had eyes, dug what they saw. The yams like my jam, said it was sweet. And Libby, 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 they like the steady beat. Everybody say ho, 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 ho. Oh, oh, oh. Green Giant. Uh, that, that was like a commercial back then. So it was yeah, like I Green it. Giant. I mean, it was silly. This is the <laughs> 80s, you know. But yeah, it was like, you know, I, when I used to rap back then, you know, like uh, I remember the, the people were like, they were more shocked. They were like, the white boy can rap. The white boy can rap. You know, because it was so like 
odd looking, you know, I look like Buddy Holly, bright red hair glasses. And so, but I kind of got that bug of like, wow, it's great to like surprise audiences, entertain them and hit them with something. And you were the original Eminem. The original, I know, I used to even rap, I used to go, I used to do a joke about that. I used to go, and this is before Eminem, I, you know, and I used to go, uh, I used to, how to go? Um, uh, something about before Vanilla Ice came along and messed it up for all the white dudes, you know, and yeah, it was cool. I partnered with this other dude. We called ourselves Strawberry Fudge. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, He was yeah, black yeah. and I was redhead and we'd throw out candy and stuff. It was so, Strawberry Fudge. Yeah, we Strawberry Fudge. <laughs> then we, stopped, we dropped that name when we played Oakland and then we, <laughs> and somebody heckled, Strawberry Fudge Packers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, you're going down our – yeah, that's, that's – We're like, yeah, you know what? Let's, let's drop this name. This name is <laughs> – you know. So 90, yeah. you were like the funny kid. You just wanted – Funny kid and I, and, I, and I got into like rapping and I got into like, you know, uh, uh, the theater arts like dramatic uh you know i'm sorry i'm the speech and debate team and i did like humorous interpretation and dramatic interpretation and for you people that are into forensics know what i'm talking about uh, original prose and poetry i went to state with that original stuff went to nationals and community college went there for two years and uh so by the time i actually used a real microphone and did stand up i had like experience in front of people and putting this structure together and and uh it it wasn't that it wasn't very hard for me. And also I was in a secluded area. It was like Fresno. So that first year that I was like not very good or bombing and all that, no one really saw it. And plus there was no cell phone cameras back then. Right. So by the time I, you know, hit the Bay Area and what got me there was I worked at um, this uh, theme park, Six Flags, Great America. I auditioned to, to, for it. And, so you're uh, a California boy. Totally California. Got that gig, did Bay Area stuff and – you know, and then from there, I moved to San Diego for about a year and a little over a year. Then I came to L.A. Okay. Yeah. And that's, and then things start popping off. Things start popping off. What was your first big break? First big, big break. Well, they're all little breaks, you know. Like, what was like the, the one thing? Okay. Like, the one thing, probably that Latino Laugh Festival on Showtime. That was the first one. I was at the comedy store. Uh, a producer that produced that, that festival happened to see me. Happened just by accident. Happenstance. And, in, and back then, I was... My comedy was was just like it is now, but back then it was really autobiographical. And I talked about growing up in Fresno in a Latino neighborhood and, you know, just some of the characters that I would do. And, and this guy happened to see that part where I'd be like, I go, uh, I go, hey, guys, they didn't always call me Darren Carter, the party starter. They used to call me Rooster. And I'd walk to school. Orale, what's up, Rooster? Ah, ah, what's happening, Fireball? I know you hear me, puto. Ah, do my homework, Rooster. And, and I'm like, I had, you know, and I, I would do the jokes about how I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken and they'd, you know, and let me get a two piece right now, a piece of your sister and your cousin, oh, what lay, you know, and this guy was like, I love that. He goes, I want you to like showcase, he goes, you're going to get in, but I want you to showcase just, just to kind of see what we're going to do. And, uh, and then I, I booked it and they flew us out to Texas and it was great, man. I got to meet like Cheech, you know, all, every Latin star you could think of was there, including like, I mean, not even just comedians and actors like Geraldo Rivera, like Geraldo? Mitzi Shore flew out there. Really? Um, By the way, Geraldo yeah. lives in Cleveland, Ohio. Does he really? He lives in Cleveland, wow. Ohio. He moved there. I wonder why. Why there? His wife or something? I think his wife is from there and he wanted mm-hmm. to kind of settle down in the Midwest. He works. At, he actually works for my old. Uh, I used to work for a radio station out there. He works for that company. Wow! So it's very. He's odd. still on TV too, huh? I think he, yeah, he pops up on TV. Still all the time. a talking head and all that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sorry to sidetrack you. So so, mm. uh, Mitzi flew out. Mitzi flew out. Brian Holtzman did it. He was the other. The Brian only other, Holtzman. Yeah, the only other white guy I could think of that were non Latino, as far as I remember. But yeah, it was great, man. By the way, I'm gonna start doing comedy pick of the week. Brian Holtzman, everybody, yeah. follow him on social yeah. media. Yeah, and, yeah, and definitely go see him at the comedy store where he's going up in the Brody Stevens spot, as I like to call it. Yes, he's, we'll we'll talk off air, but or I can just ask you. Or I just want to ask you, what are you doing tomorrow at, at noon? Are you busy, or do you want to do this thing? Uh, speaking of bro, here's the reason I ask. Um, so Brody was one of the guests, last guests. I mean, you know, yeah. By the way, yes, okay. I, I was going to get into this, okay, so okay. let's just get into it. Okay. So, uh, I mean, Brody's been on this podcast a number of times. Really? That's awesome. Dear friend of mine, and he, you actually did one of his last podcasts. You go If you go subscribe to Darren's podcast, uh, Pocket Party. Pocket Party podcast. Yeah, yeah. you can go iTunes, Google, iHeart, wherever you can. Yeah. And, uh, it was in February. It was, yeah. And I actually listened to it, I think, like a month ago. And it's just, wow. Like, you were, tr- like, you were literally were trying to help. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a rough one to listen back to considering. Yes. But, uh, it's, uh, go, go ahead with what you were about to say. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we, you know, he reached out to me and was like, I'd love to do your podcast. And that was really cool because at that point, like, um, 
you know, not a lot of, I was mostly reaching out to people. So it was like, he was one of the few that reached out and it was like really cool. Like, whoa, okay. Yeah. And especially looking back now, like, wow, that was interesting that he reached out to me. You know? Yeah. Like, and not to put anything on it, but I, but it is weird, man. It's, it's a good weird, you know, like yeah. he is called it weird that I reached out to you too. <laughs> 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 and I'm talking about my depression and, and I like, it. like enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> I know you're like, you're like, Darren, it ain't that weird, man. Like there's a, by the way, well, what? Brody, I'll see you soon, pal. <laughs> no. oh, my God. Eight one eight. No. We, uh... <laughs> Well, what I was going to, well, okay. So let me back up. All right. Um, so we were supposed to get, you know, I was supposed to come over to, you know, or I think we were supposed to do it at the comedy store or something on sun on, on that Sunday. Uh, and he's like, you know, I just don't feel like going down there. I don't feel like, and I go, well, you want to come to Burbank? You know, I live in Burbank. We can, he's like, I just don't, you know, I let these meds kind of even out. I think I'm going to be better, but it's like, you know, it just takes me my levels. You know? And I was like, no problem. No problem. And uh, I go, let me call you in a few hours. So I, I got dinner few hours goes by and he goes, I'm just not feeling it. You know, I actually talked to him on the phone and he's like, let's do it tomorrow. And, he, and then I go, perfect. And, and, and he made sure like, and he was texting me like, I'm he wanted me to know, like, I'm not a flake. I'm not a flake. I just don't, you know, I want to do this, but I just don't feel right now. I'm like, no problem. So we made plans. So the next day I, did, I, I went to his, we hung out like for like five hours at his apartment. Like it was a trip. And there was a, the reason it was five hours is there was, I got there and, and he has a, he had a friend that was there to help out. She did some errands, and uh, so he and I just, you know, we just before I recorded or anything, we just talked for a couple hours. She was, she set up, she came back, she made us coffee, and I remember it's kind of funny because I think I don't know if she if they just bought it. I think they, I'm not sure if they just bought a coffee maker or something. Because she's like, oh, she's like Brody, there's no filters, and then she's like, she goes, I, I'll just use a paper towel. So she was, and I was like, mm, I don't know, isn't like debris, is it going to like break down? And like, I don't want like paper yeah. towels in my coffee. And she's like, ah, like, I mean, it's like prison style, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. she goes, well, let's, let's, uh, she goes, I'll test it first. So she's making the coffee and he and I are talking. And by the way, he also had Starbucks, like those cold, you know, the, those Frappuccino things, that oh, are yeah. like, like bottled, you know? And so I drank that and then she made the coffee and, and then there was nothing floating and it looked perfect. And I was like, perfect. So, you know, we're just drinking coffee and she's hanging out and. He walked her to, uh, he walked her out of the building. And so I'm in his apartment, you know, for the very first time. And, and I just, it was well, like, I've a, been there. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a museum. Of, yeah. of, it was just all memorabilia. It was all like, you know, posters of him. And, yeah. Right. Like it, it, it looks like, honestly, like a 16 year old boy's yes. house. Yes. Yeah. It did. <laughs> it, it, it's a clubhouse. It did. It yeah. did. Right. And then it's a, he, it was like a fort. <laughs> it was like a cool fort because it was mixed. Uh, it was mixed with uh, uh, a combination of memorabilia, you know, like and, and like his catchphrases, like you know when you get an ad, you know, like and somebody will make like a, a wood address of their, you know, their like in the in the bathroom. There was a wood thing that said eight one eight, you know, yeah, and just there was you know photographs of him and like Dave Chappelle on stage and all these great big posters and things, and then you'd see all his books, like his bookshelf was comedy and baseball and stuff like that and but then like you said when it was like a, a fort like i remember there was tons of like baseball bats and dumbbells kettlebells and i even saw like some brass knuckles you know and i <laughs> like, are those brass knuckles real and he's like i think so <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> it was cool and like I, I i i was thinking like i really want to take some photos so i did take some photos but i want to be like too creepy and like right. start but part of me was like what books does he read you know like yeah. you know but you don't want to be caught snooping around and but yeah. i took enough to where i was like you know i took i think like five or six pictures that that said like you know enjoy it and all that kind of cool stuff and and uh you know looking back this is a little odd but in the moment it wasn't that odd i remember he gave jen a few things and he gave me some things he's like hey you want some beanies and some you know just different things right. you know like like uh hats and beanies and you know some t-shirts and and he even made a little joke he goes you know, you know they they say when someone gives away stuff, he goes, but this it's not that. It's like it's just he goes, I, I give stuff. You know, I just it's just extra. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, that's why I didn't think anything. You know, sure. Um, but yeah, it was great to you know talk with him and and it's just uh, you know you're to be, trying to. I remember you're yeah. trying to get him to go out and exercise with you. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Uh, if you want tomorrow, okay. So here's the thing. So there's a one of the listeners that um, is very supportive. You probably know him online. I don't really know him in real life. I don't think I do. But in online, his name is Tommy Godlove. Oh, you told me about this at the yeah. store. At the store, you told me about. Yes. You reached out and you guys were gonna get together. And yeah, go. it's tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna meet at Griffith Park at twelve noon. Um, we're gonna park at the Gene Autry Museum right there on the five and the one thirty four noon. Um, 
And he, he reached out to me and he goes, uh, I'll show you real quick. He said, uh, cause on the podcast, I go, bro, do you know, to lift your spirits, it's good to exercise, you know, you, the endorphins, the adrenaline. I said, let's, let's go to, let's go to like Runyon Canyon or Griffith park. Let's do it. You know, and we'll get it. And, and he, you know, Brody was even saying, he goes, yeah, we'll get a sweat going. I go, I know I go, I got, I got, you know, I'll, I'll bring a medicine ball. We'll throw the medicine ball on the ground and we'll jump rope. We'll get out there. We'll just get, get moving. Like, I really thought we were going to do that, you know? And I, cause I go to the boxing gym Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, generally if when I'm in town and then, and like Tuesdays and Thursdays are the days that I don't do that, but I will go run somewhere or do something. And I'm thinking, yeah, we'll do it like on a Tuesday and we'll go and then, or Thursday. And then, and it's like, uh, and then of course, you know, that, that never happened. Yeah. So Tommy Godlove reached out to me and he was like, let's make it happen. We'll pick a date. Let's pick, I go, let's do it. All right. And I said, if you, I go, I'm not good at organizing. I said, but if you want to do something and he, and, and Tommy, he organ, he, he basically just made like a little, you know, right. A thing. Like, I think this is it. I'm just going to show it to you, but. Um, but anyways, that's, that's where it's at. It's just in sort of the spirit of Brody, you know, he's calling it, uh, I think he's calling it the festival, not, oh, the, Fe the festival of friendship walk. Yeah. That's what he's calling it. But, um, but Tommy made, Tommy Godlove made up some, um, those, those, uh, you know, those little rubber band, those blue, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're called, but it's, looks really cool. It's blue. And it has, and it, with white writing, it says like positive energy. Yeah, you know, so it's it's a I don't know. And Brody's, and he's going to pass those out, and you know. Oh, that's cool. That's but great. Yeah. Yeah. No, anyway, anyway, to keep the guy's memory going. Yeah, I mean, and he's I, such a big influence and friend of mine. Yeah, and I even told I told Tommy I go, hey, this might be. I go, what if nobody shows up, man? There's just gonna be two of us. That'll be kind of weird, <laughs> you know. Like I don't, I don't know. And then he goes, uh, he goes, no, there'll be three of us. He goes, me, you, and Brody and Spirit. So yeah. that's kind of sweet. You know? Yeah, but, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know what I said? You know what? Let's do it. Let's just let's get out there and. You know, see that, and that's uh, a lot of people that are listening, or like you. I know a lot of young comics listen. Like you, everybody, like you know, you get to stand up, and you're like, it's going to be all this glamour and success. But there's that side, like we were talking about. We lost a friend. He, can, yeah. he couldn't handle it anymore. Do you follow Roy? No, not Roy Jones Jr. That's a boxer. Do you follow Roy Wood Jr.? I know Roy. Yeah, yes, I do. I was reading his his um, stories on Instagram. On He's very talented. Yeah, the recent. Well, there was like a recent holiday, Mother's Day. I think it was. It just maybe it just happened to be that. And he wrote this these really good posts that day. He said something like, "When you get into comedy, stand up comedy in your twenties, you sign a, like a, a contract that you don't know that you're signing, and it's to basically put off other things like putting away stuff, right? You know, going to events, certain friends, family, like functions, like you know. And then eventually they stop asking you because they're like, oh, Chad always cancels for a gig or this and that.' But it can happen. That's why." I think it's very important to have balance. And also it's easier when you, when you do get married, cause excuse me, my wife will make me, um, like the, you know, she's like, don't forget, this is the, this is my mother's birthday, my father's birthday. Blah, blah. And there's been times where I'm like, ah, I had, I could have done the improv, but I, you know, but, but, it, but in the moment, in the, in the moment, the young selfish part of me was like, ah, I want to do comedy and stand up. And then, but then you kind of, get used to that. And then you like, look back at your life and you're like, wow, I'm really glad I had those family moments because I remember the birthday parties that the, the and I remember the, the family get togethers more than you would just a random, another night on the road, you know? So yeah. it is good to kind of, so you're trying you to know. say, I need to marry your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ch Jeannie, I got a new guy for you. <laughs> Duly noted. He needs yeah. balance. Block out some dates on your calendar. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. But, or, or, or just a, any, any woman maybe, you know, will be, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, and it's the resistance thing because at first you might be like, damn it. Yeah. How often do I get a great gig? And you know. And just but it's also that, getting that yeah. that woman that understands us and what yes. we do. Yeah, 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 crazy yeah. thing that we 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 set out to do. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, totally. And it's like you know, and then we, my wife and I have a great balance because she, you know, what does she do? She raises our son and and is a hundred percent into it, and it's great. And so like so times like this, like at night, he's in bed and and you know she because she you know makes sure he goes to bed early so he's ready for school and and. This is her time. So she's like, oftentimes she's like, okay, you know, she, I mean, she's like, okay, it's, uh, are you going to go out and do some sets tonight? Like I could tell she's like, you know, like it's cool if I stay home, but she's really like, go out and do a set, go out, you know, like, and, and one time she was like PMS and she's like, and don't come home until after midnight, you know, like, yeah. she's like, I need to like, just watch my programs and like, just be by myself. I get it though. You know, it's oh, like, I, I love being alone. I love it. It's, yeah. it's almost scary how much I love being alone. It's That's like, a great thing for a comic for us as a, or as a person, right? Because I know exactly 
exactly what you mean. When I was, I remember the first time I did the road, the very first road gig, that's when I realized I'm alone. Like I was like, oh, I got this gig and it was by the beach and I had a hotel and I'm in the jacuzzi and I'm chilling in the jacuzzi. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm actually a stand up comedian, even though I was just hosting. And, I, and then I realized like, well, I'm in this jacuzzi by myself. Like I don't have a girlfriend here and I'm a friend here. I'm like, ooh, this is lonely. But then I realized like, that's okay. You kind of get used to it. And yeah. Then, and then it actually becomes something kind of comforting, right? Because yeah. you could do your... Um, not to switch gears, but uh, who was one of the bigger comics that took you out that like kind of changed things for you? Mm, I don't really get that a lot. Um, back in the day. Oh, back in the day, even then, because I was always like a lot of, you know... You went sound straight effect. to headlining. No, nah, just the sound effects and impressions. And I'd always hype the crowds up and people kind of don't like that. You know, I'd say, I mean, Paul Rodriguez, you know, he, 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 he I would open for him. And, and I remember one time, uh, there was 1500 people down in San Diego and, and, uh, I come off, off backstage and he goes, you did, you killed it. You did so good. You're never going to open for me again. And everyone's <laughs> laughing. He goes, no, but I'm serious. <laughs> and you're like, I need the work. I know. Like, Dude, <laughs> come on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, you know, but, um. Yeah, I wish I, I wish I honestly wish I could, you know, like I really would love to, you know, like go out there and you know, like some of these guys have those great, those great gigs, right? They're on yeah. private planes flying around and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, that, you're, you're, but you're like a fun act, like everything about yeah, you. Yeah. And fun. I'm trying to let's like, if there's any big stars out there that want me, I will do. Oh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you who, who, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Tracy Morgan. Oh, like, okay. well, here's the thing. A lot of times black acts would let me open for him because, you know, I'm not going to be touching on their material. Yeah. And I remember that one of the first times I, I, uh, I opened for Tracy like three different weeks. And the first time I kind of was reserved, you know, like I, I sort of like stayed my feet planted. I didn't want to move around too much on stage. Mm -hmm. I didn't really go. And then he was great. Cause in the green room, he goes, I seen your, sh you know, can we curse? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, he goes, Oh good. Oh frick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, 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 we can curse. Oh, this went, is a Christian podcast. <laughs> he went bonkers. No. <laughs> but uh, but Tracy was like, is like, do your shit, man. I've seen you before. Do your shit. Do it, man. Get, you know? So I was like, perfect. So Because I didn't want that thing of, you know, like getting, you know, shade from the, you know, because there was times, when, you know, earlier in my career when I would open and then they didn't like it, you know. Like, right. Too much. What, are you going to dance around all night? And they hated that shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I'm also more mellow. You know, I'm talking about relation, you know, wife, son, stuff like that. So right. I think I'm easier to follow now. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> someone's going to see me now and be like, what? This guy? Oh, come on. What a fucking ego this guy has. This guy's boring. Talking. I know, exactly. <laughs> you got to make yourself so boring that everybody wants to follow you. <laughs> You'd be surprised. And you're like, I need the work. I just be, but Darren, why'd you get so boring? Huh? Nobody would let me open for him. You know, because it sucked. Imagine like if you're like, like, okay, uh, like n name somebody who's really big and powerful. Like, like, like people aren't going to want to follow that. You right, know? right, right, right. Uh, like someone like Dan Cook. What if Dan Cook never quite made it? No one's going to want to follow that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's kind of not that I'm Dan Cook that never made it, but you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah, like 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 Sam Tripley would be a horrible feature act. Exactly, <laughs> you know, it's like he's not gonna, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's just like, especially when he was like really, you know, like grabbing the mic. Remember that one great bit he did about the wheelchair stripper? Oh yeah, he did. He did that on Premium Blend. It got yes, standing up. Exactly, <laughs> stuff like that. It's like, you know, you think some mellow, boring like headliner is gonna be like, oh boy, I'm a cerebral comic. I gotta follow this shit. Yeah. and that's what they used to do. I mean, I remember I, when I was um, younger. Uh, this, I did this Irish bar in San Francisco, and, and the headliner refused to shake my hand because I cursed, you know, a lot. And I got the crowd into it, though. Who the fuck is this guy? I don't remember his name. He was, uh, he, I do remember his name, but I won't say it. But he, <laughs> uh, tell me off air. I'll tell, okay, I will. I will write it down because <laughs> he apologized years later, and I had to make a decision do I act like I don't freaking remember? Or, and I just shook his hand, and he kept apologizing year after year. And then finally, you know, he's, he doesn't even bring it up. But it was a time where, but he told me, you know, it's so funny, Chad, because in the moment, I really did not like that he didn't do that. Right. And, but he told me his perspective years later, like here in LA, like years later. He's like, you know, he goes, I was, he goes, I probably just got in a fight with my wife. I did my first gig and I'm thinking I got to go do this Irish pub, pick up, a, you know, 200 bucks. It's a shitty gig. I don't want to do it. And I, and, and that's the thing. He was late. And so I was doing this bit 
And the bit that I was doing back then, and this is, I was probably only doing comedy for like two years at this point. Yeah. But I used to do this, and I'm not even saying it was brilliant, but the crowd got into it. And I would do a bit called, you're fucked, you're down on your luck. And I would name different things. And I go, wouldn't that be a great game show? And then I would do scenarios. And then the whole crowd would go, you're fucked, you're down on your luck. And it's fun for people to say, you know, especially at a bar. Yeah. And so, and this is also like in 1991. So this is like, you know. It's back then. It's sure. like, you know, comedy's evolved since then. And, you know, but the crowd's like, yeah. And, it, and, it was, and I had red hair and the crowd's Irish. And they're like, yeah, fuck, you're down on your luck. And I'd be like, you, blah, blah, whatever the bits were, you know, like, uh, whatever, you know, you, you're skiing in Colorado. You walk into the bank. You forget to take off your ski mask. You're, fuck, you know, so I'm doing all this. And that guy, but he, from his perspective, he's like, you know, gosh, you know, I didn't want to, you know, everyone's rowdy and they're cursing and then you're up there and he goes like, I just wanted to like, just collect my $200 and go, <laughs> and go yeah. home. No, know? I've been there. I get it. Yeah. There's like a young comic. I I, I won't. Exactly. Ex- you know, I got, I got annoyed with him because he was pulling like tricks and stuff like that. And I felt so bad the next day because I was a dick. I, yeah. I was like, I was just in a bad mood. I didn't want, you know, I, I've been there. So yeah, exactly. So I see both sides because I could see my side was like, you know, like I'm, you know, I want a headline, you know, even though I've been doing it for two years. And then that person's side is like, God, I'm just want to do my gig and make the money and then get the hell out. This freaking guys up there doing every local reference, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know. But now I don't care. Honestly, it's like whatever. I did a gig. Um, Saturday up in Lancaster and it was like 400 people and it was packed and there was like biker types and people with tattoos on their neck and the whole thing. And, you know, some of the comedians are very dirty and, but I'm like, whatever, we're in our own path and that's cool, man. I'll go up and I'm going to, cause I, I, I pretty much work clean now. And it's like, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a, it's a good challenge for myself. I got kind of, I'm not gonna say bored with comedy, but I was like, I was like, let me challenge myself and, and go clean and, and find if I can be funny because I was always like on the, you know, halfway in, halfway out. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to challenge myself in comedy because I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, you even have, on even on stage, I'm not even uh, enjoying it. Really? Yeah, that's, yeah. You need to, you need to do something to charge your battery. Cause, yeah, because if you're not enjoying it, it's not it's not good. Okay, here's a challenge. Do you have a, how many? Do you have a comedy album? I have uh, three. Okay, then you've been okay. <laughs> that's great, dude. Yeah. Three. Oh my god. Well, then again, it is 2019. Gosh, I just realized like. You've been doing it for a long time now, huh? 2005? Yeah. Was what, like officially stand up. Dude, it's so funny when, when you, when someone says 2005, I'm thinking, oh, that's like six years ago. But I'm like, no, wait a second. It's 2019. In LA, it's six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. But yeah, that, that could be a challenge. That could be a challenge is, uh, you know, like work on material towards that next album. That could be a thing. Um, what else could you do? Do you film yourself and then put little clips up on YouTube? I'm starting to do that more. That's another little challenge that could be fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, don't put it to where it's pressure and you're being, you know, like negative, but like, you know, where you're like, oh, like you know. But I could kill a bomb and I have the same feeling. It doesn't oh, matter. Really? Yeah, it's really bad right now. I, oh, wow. I just did, uh, where, did I, where was I? Oh, that sucks. I've been there. Dude, it sucks. I hate yeah. that feeling. I was in the greatest, uh, the ice house where everyone kills. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, the applause breaks and I just left going, oh, I'm so, I just want to go home. <sighs> oh, that's, that's not fun, is it? Yeah. Well, okay. How about new, because sometimes new material can make us feel you know, good. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be in Omaha this weekend. It's coming out actually at the Funny Bone. I'm at the Funny Bone. With That's awesome. Colleen Quinn. Is that is that where you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell her I said hi. I will. I promise. Who are you there with? Uh, are you like locals or something? No, I'm headlining Thursday the 23rd, and I'm with my best pal Godfrey the 24th. Dude, that's 26th. great. Yeah, so me and my buddy buddy Godfrey will be high. See, now he's an over the top, like real, like come on. Who's gonna want to feed? Who's gonna want Godfrey to open for him? Oh, uh, you like, can't. The, yeah. The guy, by the way, that guy does. He's so prolific. He does a different hour every night. He's so so come great. out to the shows, and yeah. he's so relatable. He's so good. I mean, I saw him once at one of these bar gigs, and I'm like, he just did a whole thing on playground equipment i was like when he was killing yeah 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 yeah, you know? yeah, yeah exactly you know what i mean i know that then, bit too and then you'll see him at the laugh factory and he'll do like you know uh those african voices and it's just like wow yeah he's like, very good yeah uh know? so yeah i'll be out in omaha um uh dude i love a gig like that honestly it's like when people say like you know do you want like i have this one friend that's you know, he, he's halfway into comedy and halfway out. Like he's got a day job, but he lives in LA and he, and he, and he's like, do you ever look at guys like the Sebastians and it gets you down? I'm like, no, honestly, no, I don't. I go, I just I don't even want to, I mean, that's, I know very few people can get to the tippy top of the pyramid like that. I go, I'm very happy with staying in the Hilton garden Inn, hanging out at the mall during the day, doing a good club. That's like, you know what I mean? I love that. Like that. 
That Omaha one is great, man. Yeah. There's just a nice, you're going to have like all these restaurants you can go to. It's like, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, talk about Sebastian. I remember sleeping on that guy's hotel room. We just did a gig for he got paid. I remember we did a bar gig. He got paid five hundred dollars. I got a hundred dollars to open. I remember him counting the cash on my Dodge Neon dashboard. <laughs> and this guy's now what making fifteen million a year? Yeah. Jesus. I know, right? It's a trip, right? <laughs> yeah. See, it's like I know we did a we both did our did we both do no, we both did uh, it was called Comics Without Borders and it was on Showtime. And the was, Russell Peters, joint? yeah, Russell Peters, yeah, 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 and um, and he uh, he and I both taped that same night, and I remember him being on uh, on the side of the theater, and he was just frustrated because he's like he didn't feel like he did like what he wanted to do or something. He was like, mm, but he's kind of reserved, you know. I guess unless you maybe like really know him, but I was like, I was like, you okay? And he's like, I just didn't. Do, uh, but I mean, dude, I mean, look where he's at. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah, he locked in. And it just went off like just the fuel. Went, whoa, yeah. You know, no, that's and that's one of the things that keeps me like I see guys like that. I don't get jealous. I'm like, oh, there's an opportunity. Like you never know. It could be that next viral video, the next tweet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it could, yeah, <laughs> it could be. I mean, for me, I don't think it's going to be the tweet. Uh, no one really responds to my Twitter like that. <laughs> you know, like I think Twitter is more negative or political or if you're like, you know, or that's what people respond to, it seems like. But. I, I'm back when um, at midnight was on, I would get like a lot of like you know that'd be kind of cool where you're like I tweet some of those funny little puns or whatever and then oh at the show or on the show no I would tweet at the show or whatever those were the trending topic it was like a little bit more fun you know yeah like you know six words that or whatever you know replace a band with food or whatever you know right 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 you know Jimmy Buffett or whatever I think I said one that was or stairway to whatever I mean I don't know whatever those little dumb puns but have you ever had a viral video yes dude did you I've had. And what was three. it? Three. Wow. I did uh there was a video back home. It was a it was a parody of Empire State of Mind, but it was called Parma State of Mind, which was a local I wonder if I saw that one. I think I saw it. It's out local shots of uh, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah. Well there, my buddy Mike did one called Factory of Sat no, what was it? There was uh the Cleveland Tourism video. Mm. So that went viral. Uh what else? I had like two others. I had another one. It was all local stuff, but for some reason... That's it, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did local billboards in Fresno, and I was on like 33 of them, and that felt cool. You're driving down the street, I'm on a billboard. I was, oh, I'm on another billboard. You know? That's pretty cool. That was very cool. Then I went to like a, a car show and uh, got recognized a lot at the car show. And I was From like, the billboard? Yes. Oh, well, wow. I was also on local commercials. So it was local commercial, local billboards. And I was like, this is what it's like to be famous. Yeah. But I was, still wasn't getting chicks. You know? <laughs> this is back when I was 20. Yeah. So going back to John Travolta, you do that movie, yeah. Be Cool. I remember you being in that. I remember watching that and seeing you. Dude, it was great. I was in the first five minutes. If you guys ever watched Be Cool, in the first five minutes of the movie, about the five-minute mark. And uh, I remember my wife and I went to the premiere and somebody walked in late and they walked right in front and we're like, dude, you're right. It's during my scene, you know, like, it, it ruined it. It's like, yeah, yeah, they ruined it. But I was like, ah, you know, it was very cool, man. And like, there's a scene, I think it's um, like in the movie theater it was pretty cool. Like, like there's a scene where after I'm, I'm talking to John Travolta, uh, he walks away and I, and I gaze up at the billboard and, the, and then you see you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> there I am again. And, and it's cool. They left the camera on me for like, it seemed like one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. And then they moved on. And I'm like, that was so cool that the director did that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. I'm just like having my scenes. And then I'm like, hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Isn't it weird that, you know, you grew, you obviously grew up over here, but you're in a movie. You're hanging yeah. out with John Travolta. It's just, it takes away that magic, does it? Like to me, it's just like now I used to. I remember I used to be so. Oh my god, look at there's so and so. Now I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's like uh, it's just they're normal people. They're just doing their thing, and it's just you know. I sometimes will go to a famous person's place or house or whatever, and gated community and this and that, and you know, it's very nice and all that. But then when I come back home, it's like I'm like I, I don't know. There's something. It's more comfy, you know. I'd rather be, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it's it. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I want to, like, you know, live in like the, the hills or whatever, where it's like windy roads and the nearest Starbucks or grocery stores are far away. I don't, I don't want that. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. And how about you? If you, if you could, you know, like, 
afford like a four bedroom, four bathroom like home? Would you live like in the valley, or would you live? Where would you live in L.A. If you could? I, I honestly, I'm, I've I've never been money motivated, yeah. and I've never been like faint. Like maybe at one point I wanted to be famous, but now I like I I I, I just want to make a decent living doing this. Yeah, me like, too. Like and, yeah. and and I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. I don't. I don't really want any extra attention. I don't want. I, it, yeah, because I've had the, the. You know, I've had fame is easier than fortune. I think. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because they could film you, and then because they did that. You know, for me, like when I was on like BET and all that stuff, like they would air it a lot, and these other cable networks they air it a lot, and so you people will recognize you, especially when I had the bright red hair. It's like, dude, I was really standing out, mm -hmm. and then it's so I kind of knew what it was like, you know, and and it's it's it's. it's it's cool, but it's kind of weird sometimes because people start looking at you and they, but they're trying to place where I know this guy from. But all of a sudden you're you're not anonymous. You're at the food court at some mall and you're like, why is that guy staring at me? Like, does he want to fight me? And then you realize like it's they recognize. Yeah, my yeah. and as I've I, I've respected like I like privacy. I yeah. like it a lot. And uh, yeah, being that public figure is not. Yeah, have you ever hung out with like Godfrey or one of these guys and you see how that people recognize them and it's kind of like. It could be annoying, right? Like, oh, if, dude. You're, if you're not in the mood, if you just wash your hands and now some some weirdos like, "How you doing?" And you're like, "Oh God, I was gonna eat these French fries. Not gonna wash my hands again." Yeah, I remember I, I opened for Chris D'Elia in Pittsburgh. We did a bunch of shows together, and one day he's like, "Do you, you want to go hang out and like go get coffee or whatever?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> and he was everywhere he was going, he was getting recognized. So I was just like, "This this is not fun." Does he have to? Does he? He should throw. Does he throw on a hat or something to look a little different or? Uh, no, and Kreischer's another guy. Like, I, Kreischer gets, especially right now. But I now. think he's really into, like, he doesn't mind, right? Like, he loves it. Yeah, he doesn't even, like, tell people, we're going to go to this bar, we're going to yeah. go here, and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, there's some people that embrace it and some people that don't really want it. So, yeah. you know, and I think. I, I wish you could turn it on and turn it off, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like turn it on when you need your bills paid. <laughs> exactly. Turn it off when you want your privacy with your family. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, we're getting towards the end of the podcast. Darren, uh, I would love for you, if you're cool with it, plug all your social media, YouTube, and where people can find you and tour dates or whatever. Oh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, DarrenCarter.com is a. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. Uh, my social, my Instagram is official Darren Carter. My podcast is called Pocket Party. And, you know, I, I started the podcast, uh, like I said, uh, to, I wanted to put some positivity in the world. And it's so cool now that you can, I literally have the microphone, the recorder, and I can go wherever I want. Like I, it's mobile, you know, I can. Sure. And I love that. Like, you know, you don't have to ask permission to do, to create something, you know, like, like this is great that you have your podcast. You don't have to ask like NBC or CBS or you just like, Nope, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to keep putting them out and you're going to start a Patreon and all that stuff. I love it. You know, and you never know what this stuff leads to. I have a, my son, he's eleven. He when he and uh, he's been playing piano for a couple of years now, and he, I go, son, can you come up with a theme song? And so he he created like a little thirty second. Theme. I said, make it thirty seconds or less. He created the theme song. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then I go, if anybody wants to cover it, you know, send something. And somebody sent one in from the Netherlands, like their version of it, um, it from Nashville. A guy with a guitar. I mean, it's pretty cool. People have sent in originals, and I'm like, this is awesome. Like, It's just like this idea you have. You put it out there. People send stuff in, and it's cool. There's a guy that um, – he's a voiceover actor on Family Guy, and he he, uh, he does a great Morgan Freeman, and he opens up like uh, – Oh, I heard yeah. it. I did yeah. hear it, yeah. You're listening he, to the pocket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I remember hearing Things it, like yeah. that, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I went to Paul Rodriguez's giant ass house <laughs> last week and interviewed him. And dude, it was great. It's everything you'd want a comedy legend's home to be like. Like the gates just magically open when I text him, I'm here. And then, sure, welcome to Fantasy Island. I mean, he's got like waterfalls and like all kinds of greenery and 60 foot, you know. Comedy paid for it. Comedy paid for it, man. It's like, remember how Brody, we described his apartment with all the memorabilia? It's like Paul's was like that, but it was like two-story home, and there's a swimming pool and like stairs and a little grape vineyard. And yeah, it was really cool to like hang out with him and, and you know, have him on the show. And he's, you know, he's done it all. He And he's a little bit in part of old Hollywood, you know, like he, he did shows, hung out with Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. And, you know, so he's on the podcast talking about that. Next week I have... Uh, a wrestler who I ne I'm not really into wrestling, but I, I have. It's a female wrestler. Her name is. Hold on, Candice Michelle. Candice, I'm and not she familiar. posed for Playboy. She's, really? She's in the cover of Playboy, actually. Cover of Playboy. I saw the magazines. All right, now I'm she, interested. Here, I'm googling. <laughs> He's like, now I'm in. Here, I'll show you. See if you recognize Candace her. Candice who? Candice Michelle. 
Yeah. Look, this is her. Do you recognize her? No, but I want to recognize her. I know. Isn't Holy she balls. Nice. She was in the WWE? Yes. Yeah. WWE. Where's the camera? Let's click that. Look at that. I don't think you can see it, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pocket Party Podcast. Ah. <laughs> also, my YouTube channel. I do a I'd, lot of... I'd like to make love to her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has three. She has three kids and a. And a she husband. has three kids. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Well, I mean, this picture might be from ten years ago. She's a great. She was great. She um, holy balls. She's, she's on your podcast. I'll she, listen to that. I know. Check that one out. This week on the Pocket Party Podcast, I got Candace Michelle. How are you? Look at that. Ooh, look at that chair. She she might hit me with it. But I just, I know, I know. <laughs> But All yeah, right. she's she's cool. But right. yeah, so yeah, that's I, I I'm loving doing the podcast, and I'm probably you know, and it's so funny. I started this year like I'm gonna do another album, and now it's like May already, and I'm like, am I really? Good? I gotta get back on that of like doing the work and doing that. That's what I need. I need help with that goal. You've always been doing the work, man. You've been around. You're consistent. No one it's, has a bad word to say about it, you. It's fun to like. Thank you, but it's it's like. There's just so much to do that it's... You're the opposite of me. <laughs> There's so much to do in a good way, but it's like, damn it, it's like all these plates are spinning, right? Like I'm getting my trying to get the YouTube videos going, and I'm putting out one or two a week, sometimes three a week, sometimes four a week, and then I'm doing the podcast, and then you're like, then you got to exercise, and you I got know. the family time. Now I'm like, okay, I got to put this album out, and it's like, gosh, it's like... It's a lot. It's and then, then there's the work. lazy part of me where it's like, all right, I've done some stuff. Let me just veg for a while and watch, like I said, those the YouTube Joe Rogan clips or tutorials or something. It's like, you can't always be like, you know. Yeah, it's... Some some people are though, right? Like they're oh, there's some people that are masters at they it. They would like just, finish this right now, and they'd be like, "I gotta go home so I can wake up at seven a.m. and work on my album from seven to nine a.m. and then go work out from nine to ten, and then yeah, it's like I'm not built like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. It's hard. It's a. It's a, you're definitely. It's we're spinning plates. So if you can do that and subscribe to his podcast, follow him on social media. Darren's a very entertaining guy. And Thank I'll, you for having me on, dude. Man. I appreciate you yeah. coming out for this uh, first episode on Comedy Pop Up. That's so cool. You broke the cherry. Yes. <laughs> Look at you. And you can go to my Patreon, three dollars a month. It's uh, bonus content episodes. It supports me. Uh, it keeps me. Uh, I don't know. Pace. I put it back into the podcast, y'all. So hit me up, <laughs> subscribe, share it. I'm laughing because I'm. I'm not looking. This is the one part of the podcast I'm not looking at him. I'm trying to look at that camera. Yeah. Is this good? Okay. Get a good look at Darren Carter if you're watching on the live <laughs> video stream That's slash awesome. taped. Uh, yeah, guys, thanks for listening. Hit subscribe, share it. And uh, if you want to email me directly, it's chedzumak3 at Gmail. And I'll uh, give you guys a shout out. Do what you, you know, you want me to talk about a certain person or you want me to bring on a certain someone, let me know. And uh, I'm looking forward to the new, uh, the new journey here over at Comedy Pop-Up. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. That's a wrap.